Hey, oh, I'm up and live. Hello, God, oh, wow, everyone totally woke up, hi. Um, I'm gonna give you all a chance to be able to kind of settle in and that sort of thing and kind of, frankly, hear how loud it is in the room so I'm not blowing you out. And my sound guy stepped away, okay. Um, also, pro tip, put your phone on airplane mode because your phone actually does have the capacity to interfere with your mics on occasion and also you don't want to get distracted by anybody harassing you on Twitter. Yeah, no, just come on in, get settled. No big deal, we'll wait for the drum circle to die down or maybe it'll be a background of drum circle, don't know. But this is work on the wrong things first. I'm gonna rant at you guys for about 20 minutes or so and then we'll talk and you can get a chance to be able to tell me what you think because um, frankly I don't really want to hear the sound of my own voice for more than about 20 minutes and I'm sure you guys are the same. Unfortunately, I'm a speaker, so you're stuck with me. Um, yeah. Other pieces about me, I am, well, at Amy on Twitter, and I'm Amy, and you can find me here all week. Um, I am the Gluster community lead at Red Hat, but pieces of my work will kind of drop in and out of this talk. This talk is really more about being part of technology and being part of, frankly, what it means to be in the world. Um, I wrote this talk back in October-ish, um, and it turns out a lot of things have changed. So I'm going to try not to bring most of that in, but you'll see it. There's bits of this that kind of comes together. So, cool. Looks like we've got most everybody here. And let's see if I can make the clicker work. No. Magic. No magic today. There was magic and now there is not. All right. Rock and roll. Yeah, I keep trying for magic, but no. So, the initial piece that I'm going to bring to you is it is way, way too easy as far as all of our technology goes to get into caught, caught into a path where you're like, you know, I must be doing it wrong. Everyone else seems to totally understand all of this technology and I feel like a moron every single day. I see nods, I see smiles, I see, yeah. And the problem with feeling that way is that that's actually wrong. Um, we have an obsession, I think, in tech that you have to be working on all the right things, like do the right thing first, and I see it all over Silicon Valley, and I see it all over, frankly, every time that you get off an airplane and you see like those lines on the uh, jet, jet runway about like, ooh, yes, we're working on all the right things, I think we need to let go of that obsession. So, I give you work on the wrong things first. And of course, there we go, super. So, this I believe. But in order to tell you that story, I gotta tell you this story. I'm an American, you can tell, mm-hmm, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> we love you too. So, this I believe was one of my favorite regular features on NPR, our national public radio. Um, it's come up a few different times, it's a kind of, piece where normal Americans step in and they tell you about what it is that they really value. Um, these pieces were really moving in their honesty and their focus on what really mattered. And that's why I was thinking, okay, build stuff for the things that really matter. Let me tell you a story. What I really, really loved about these pieces was that they were so vulnerable and they were so small. It wasn't anybody important. It wasn't anybody that you knew would be like the mailman coming in and tell you, hey, this is what I really value. Um, and it turns out it's actually based off of a 1950s radio program of the same name. It was hosted by Edward R. Murrow. And it's funny because in creating the program, he said that it sought to point towards the common meeting ground of beliefs, which is the essence of brotherhood and the floor of our civilization. And they started this back again in like the, you know, 1990s or so. But what they said at the time was, as in the 1950s, this is a time when belief is dividing the nation and the world. We are not listening well, we are not understanding each other, we are simply disagreeing, or worse. And working in broadcast communication, technology, there's a responsibility to change that, to cross borders, to encourage some empathy. That possibility is what inspires me about the series. And so I hope it inspires you. 
And why does this matter? For me, these were art. Art makes you think about how you engage with the world, how other people make you feel, and frankly, how you make other people feel. And previously, if you get a chance to be able to use this in your own work, it gives you something really powerful to look at. I go back and I look at the writings that I have done in the format of this, I believe, and they just have a ton of power for me. Maybe you have something in your own life that speaks to you in the same way in terms of work that you've done, or I don't know, sometimes it might be a piece of code. It might be something that you've done that you're like, wow, I really nailed that, and it totally made me feel like I knew what I was doing. So. So when I don't know when my next steps are, and as a community lead, I spend a lot of time kind of looking at everything in the project that isn't code. It means everything that's infrastructure and documentation and how our users engage with it and everything around that. And when I don't know what it is that I'm doing, I sit back and I go, okay, what do I believe? What does my project believe? What other pieces around that do I need to be looking at? And how do I change that? What am I missing? If I remember enough, and this gets me out of my own version of flail, you know, the Muppet flail, it happens sometimes. If I can clarify what I'm doing and why, then the way forward becomes clear. So, work on the wrong things first. I believe in finding your way forward by doing more, not less. Periodically, I will reverse myself on this because while I personally want to be able to do more and I want to be able to step out and say, yes, we can get five things done by the end of the day, sometimes I can't ask that of the team. I can't ask that of everyone around me. We don't have the capacity. For whatever reason, if we expand too much, we will fail at the things that we're trying to do. So, on occasion, cut your to-do list in half and see what happens. But um, that's another talk. I believe in experimentation. We didn't find anything out by magic, but read the documentation. Find out why this piece isn't working. Experimentation is the better form of troubleshooting. You may sometimes get sucked into troubleshooting and see what happens if you call it experimentation to find out why this doesn't work and to make things work again. See if that doesn't make somebody smile. I believe there is no one right way. Initially, I was thinking about the container landscape as I was coming towards this particular conference. And do you all know containers? Yeah? They're big. They're scary. There's lots of them. There's about a million things going on in that particular landscape right now. And initially, I was thinking about it as, you know what? I don't understand containers, and you don't either. And that's not quite true. And uh, Kelsey Hightower actually set me straight um, last week about that. He talks about how the container landscape is a platform that's kind of replaced VMs. It's replaced what we were working on before. Understand where we were coming from in order to figure out where we are going. Um, and in some ways, we've started shipping code from our laptops, and now we're in the point of like, great, we're going to ship your laptop because that's the only place that it works. What this landscape is about now is seeing all of the tricky enterprise things that led us up to here, and there is no one right solution. What matters at this moment is being able to see what the tools and paths are of the time and being able to change directions when you need to. I believe the world has expanded even further than we know about and that no one person can understand all of it. So to my previous comments about container landscape and everything else, there's way too much in here for everybody to understand. Stop looking at, oh, you don't understand this? and kind of looking at people crazy when they're like, oh, no, I don't, because it turns out maybe they have like the inner workings of COBOL, or maybe their spreadsheet foo is just way better than yours, or maybe their Google foo. I believe in kindness. I believe that kindness extends towards bridging the divide between non-technical and technical. I don't actually believe that we actually need to keep this divide but I understand why we have it. I believe that Shakespeare was right and that there are more things between heaven and earth than I dreamt of in your philosophy. And when I had an office, which I don't anymore, now I just have the whole world as my office, I had this in it to remind me that perhaps I didn't know everything and I didn't have to know everything. 
I believe in parsimony. What is parsimony? It's a big word that means use little words. Why use 18 words when three will do? I believe it's an email. If you get an email from me and it's only two lines, it's not you, it's me. I believe this in documentation. I believe this in meetings. And I believe this in technology. It's kind of like that line, if I had a longer time, you would have gotten a shorter message. I believe the kindness extends in using short words. I believe in creating space for us to mess up in. It's kind of like experimentation, but it's a little different. How will you know what the really important stuff is until you screw up on it? In a previous life, I was a project manager, and I kept the trains running on time, and I kept the developers from, you know, going off and weeping quietly into their code, or when they did, I kept the clients from it. And I brought together all the estimates, and I did all the client communication. And at one time, I delivered bad news through email. Never do this. Because I found out why. I found out why because it got so much worse from there. I learned that people need space and time to be able to react and to be able to change plans. And that needs to happen in real time. That's why I believe in creating a space. I believe that words have meaning. And we show our values through our words. This also means that when you use words that aren't right, it's important to own that and change it and try again. I believe that our actions towards each other indicate our humanity, our goals, and our collective achievements. Do you respect the team that you work on? Or if you don't, why not? Why are you there? Your actions and your words show this. One thing that I continue to work on over time is an infrastructure. Um, if it's hosting, continuous integration, continuous delivery, I love all of it. And part of the reason that I enjoy this so much is that when it's stable, you have a fantastic foundation to be able to build your work off of. Um, when it's not, if your build pipeline continually falls over or if your code magically dis disappears due to some um, misconfig config management tool, your website is constantly down, what's the point? Why would you contribute to an open source initiative that can't support the work that you're doing? Maybe you love infrastructure too. Maybe you think it's boring, that's fine. I believe in the campfire rule, that we leave places cleaner than we found them. If you find a place in the forest that's a mess, clean it up. Maybe some of the next talks can be all of the places in the forest that need cleaning up. We could take that big map of the internet, including like Null Island, and start pointing out the places that need to be fixed. But I also believe that we have the best chance to change things when we understand how they came to happen. We didn't come to this level of complexity overnight, and things are not going to get any less complex. Things like microservices, now you have a million different things to be able to debug, and it's like a murder mystery to figure out what's breaking where. And this also means that documentation will matter even more. Who, who actually enjoys writing documentation? Okay, that's more hands than I expected. <laughs> I believe in finding what moments led from here to there. Have you ever actually interviewed your past self when you're looking at code? Rather than just screaming about like, well, why did you do this? Try to remember what happened. Try to remember what led you from here to there because chances are you're going to do the same thing to yourself in two weeks. I believe that the agency of an individual person that we can have on the course of history is tremendous. Within our own work, this can be like, oh, you broke the build, and you've just kind of destroyed all of our work for the rest of the week. Or sometimes it's the person that pressed the wrong button that discovered like a really heinous bug in the workflow, like, hmm, we have three sites, and we deleted two of them, and one of them was actually live. Hmm, good luck finding that one. So there's that, those individual things, but it can also be the person with the vision to say, you know, the things we're doing here look like a really amazing content creation platform if we start thinking about what this user needs. Or, you know, what would it be like if electric cars were affordable? Given the right timing and the right colleagues and the right ideas, those little day-to-day -day things can start adding up to monumental achievements. And I'm not taking into account the fact that there are way too many things to work with, but break it down. Make it smaller. 
I believe that work that we can do will matter a great deal in the future, even if we can't see it now. I can't look back on the last three days or three months and say that one thing that I did that one day mattered. But over the course of three years, I can see it. And sometimes it's actually easier to see other people's work rather than your own. So, work on the wrong things first. All of those little things just add up. I believe that you don't get a chance to be able to figure out what it is that you really want and are inspired to by magic. It doesn't come fully formed. And where did you start? Some people started out in support. I think probably most of us. And you got a chance to be able to see why support mattered because somebody had a problem and you could fix it. I believe that you find your way slowly. Kind of like reading a map. And the map is different for all of us. Who got a computer science degree? Okay. How many of you feel like you're actually using that degree? A much smaller amount. But didn't getting the degree matter more? Because you got a chance to be able to figure out what it looked like to do the same thing day in and day out for four years or more. I think that matters. I believe that you learn more about what you want from the things that you hate and not the things that you love. And I don't really like that belief, if I'm honest. I'm not just talking about, like, you know, the things that just you detested, but remember your last on call shift, if you had an on call. On call is a really good way to be able to show you what it is that you're going to hate about your work or what your customers hate about it, where there are things to improve. The experiences that leave us cold and give us nightmares are the ones that stick with us. Those are our most valuable and useful memories. I did not say they were happy. I just said they were useful. I see some nods and some kind of like grimaces out there. <laughs> and these are our wrong things. They instruct us, they keep us honest. They tell us we're on the map. Here be dragons. For good. We remember these times where we completely failed. We take the lessons that we needed to learn, but I hope that we can leave the things that we had no control over. The situations, the environments, the people that we just weren't good with. But I hope we take the lessons and not that feeling of failure. I believe that things don't always have to work. I believe that sometimes you have to walk away when you've done everything you can. I believe in walking away to save yourself. I believe that not everything is perfect. And I believe that we have a duty to be able to take on fixing the messes that we can see. I'm now kind of excited about being able to build out a, a map, a forest of all of the things that we need to be able to fix. It might be a long talk. I also believe that everything has a downside, that there is that one project that looks like it's going to be the most amazing thing ever, and there's still going to be a downside. I believe that nothing is perfect. I believe that engagement matters more. I think that we work best when we are entangled in something to be able to see the really important pieces about it, why it matters, but also its flaws. I believe that we do our best work when we can see our impact immediately and over time. I believe that we all have this capacity and that we can encourage it in others. I believe that we can work on this imperfect thing in order to be able to see what doesn't work.
believe that when we belittle each other for our work in the space, we lose sight of the power that we have. I believe that when you tell someone you can't do this because of X or Y or Z, you don't live in Silicon Valley, something else, that we do a great evil to our own cause. I totally believe that this is an inadvertent and it comes out of ignorance. I refuse to believe that this is malice. I believe that our technology exists for a more free and a more open world. I believe that we need to build for everyone and not just the people who can afford it. I believe that we need to think about our technology infrastructure as a public good and not as a private pay for access service, but I have been an open source for a long time, so I will preach this for a long, long time to come. I believe that we need to have access for all people. I believe we can do better. This I believe. Just give yourself that kind of permission to go ahead and work on the wrong things first. And I found this as I was basically building out all the talk. And Barack Obama gave a press conference uh, a couple days ago. And this is from something earlier that he had said, except maybe I've got one last suggestion, just one. And that is, gear yourself for the long haul. Whatever you path you choose, business, nonprofits, government, education, healthcare, the arts. He means technology in there too. Whatever it is, you're going to have some setbacks. You will deal occasionally with foolish people. You'll be frustrated. You'll have the boss that's not great. You won't always get everything you want, at least not as fast as you want it. So you have to stick with it. You have to be persistent, and success, however small, is still success. I always tell my daughters, you know, better is good. It may not be perfect, it may not be great, but it's good. That's how progress happens in societies and in our own lives. Barack Obama, May 15th, 2016, and I will miss him so much. So, work on the wrong things first. And thank you. You can come and give me questions, but it's not really a talk about questions in the same sort of way, if I'm honest. But I told you I was going to rant for about 20 minutes, and I mostly did. So what do you want to talk about? Anything come up for you? Oh, how do you know when to give up on the wrong thing? When you can't imagine yourself continuing to do it anymore. When, when at some point you're like, oh gosh, like bad things, bad things are gonna happen if I continue to work on this. Um, and sometimes it's sort of like, you can get fired, and that's a great way to know that you should not be there anymore. That one's fun. Um, or I think the harder one is knowing when to fire yourself, and I think that's the question that you're asking. I can come back to that. Uh, yes, real more life scenarios, interviewing your past self. Um, and what happens if you don't have a map? You might have a map in front of you, but it's hard to be able to say what it is. It's hard to be able to go back and be like, well, from here to there, and there to the future. If you have someone in your life who's been there mm, maybe like 15, 20 years in tech, Ask them what the scenario that you're in feels like. See what happens from there. How do you come up with this type of presentation? <laughs> this is a new style for me. I don't normally give these kind of like me on a stage and the monologues type, but think about the pieces of art that you really admire, that you, the, the pieces of theater that you like, and try to do a talk around that. I, I agree. I believe the world will miss Barack, but I will miss him dreadfully. And I love that how that particular good is better came up at the right time. Hmm. I will, I will take real life scenarios from the crowd as well. <laughs> or you can find me. I'm here today. I'm here tomorrow. All right. I think that's it. Thank you so much.